is Kid Cudi an autistic genius or simply overhyped? This question fiercely divides music fans. Some argue Cudi peaked early with Man of the Moon 2 in 2010 and has failed to recapture that magic since. Others claim they've outgrown his distressed tunes. Hating on Cudi has even become trendy in some circles. But does he get enough credit for his versatility? Beyond rapping, he has produced albums, directed films, launched fashion lines, and created an animated Netflix movie. Yet in the midst of these opinions, his formidable influence remains undeniable. After all, protégés like Travis Scott have Cudi's name etched into their skin. So how did an outcast singing about loneliness in his basement become both the voice of a generation and such a polarizing figure? Has the hype executed his talent and cultural sway? Or does Cuddy remain misunderstood as an innovator ahead of his time? Let's dig deeper into his genius versus overrated debate. Mr. Solo Dolo first started rapping in 2003 near the end of high school. He was inspired by alternative hip hop groups like Tribe Called Quest. In 2005, Cuddy moved to New York City with 500 in a demo tape to pursue a music career. He lived with his uncle, esteemed jazz drummer Khalil Mahdi, in the South Bronx for a bit. He also worked at some Manhattan clothing stores while sharing an apartment in Brooklyn with his friend and collaborator Dot the Genius. In 2006, Cuddy had a fateful encounter with his future mentor Kanye West at a Virgin Megastore in New York. He introduced himself to Wes and shared some of his music. Cuddy later ran into Wes again while working at Bait Clothing Store. He forgot to remove a sensor from a jacket Wes bought, so he ran out of the store to catch Wes before he left to remove it. This funny story marked the beginning of his connection to Kanye. Cuddy exploded onto the blog sphere with early tracks like Day and Night and Pursuit of Happiness, riding a wave of internet buzz to a record deal. His debut mixtape introduced a melancholy lyricist battling inner demons over scarce yet rich production. With the co-sign from Kanye, he quickly ascended from industry underdog to a star collaborator with significant songwriting inputs on West's influential 808s and Heartbreak. Buzzing with potential, early co-signs from music titans fuel his rocket rise. Cuddy soon stands to star status with his acclaimed debut album, Man of the Moon, a psychedelic hip-hop concept album examining mental health struggles. Songs like Soundtrack to My Life and Pursuit of Happiness connected deeply through unflinching honesty. My guy earned three Grammy nods for Man of the Moon, including Best Rap Song for Day and Night. Forming an alternative rock band while diversifying his rap catalog, a daring Cuddy felt boundless chasing varied creative muses. This initial five year run was the apex of Cuddy's artistic powers, releasing innovative music that shaped the sound of his hip hop to come while impacting youth culture. Despite no previous profile, Cuddy's early material holds up better than almost any modern rapper, cementing legitimate genius. Cuddy made his TV debut at the 2008 MTV Music Awards alongside Travis Barker and DJ AM. Major music publications like Rolling Stone and BBC named him an artist to watch in 2009, marking his rise to fame. By 2009, which is the following year, he self-leaked the trailer he made for Transformers 2 using his song Sky Might Fall. Though it didn't become official, it showcased his creative talents. That year, releasing his debut album, Man of the Moon, The End of Day, the album was a critical and commercial success, eventually going four times platinum. It contained hits like Make Her Say with Kanye West and Common. By the following year, Cuddy formed the rock band Wizard with Dot the Genius. Their debut album reached number one on Billboard's rock album chart. Later that year, he released Band of the Moon 2, The Legend of Mr. Rager also going platinum. It contained the singles Erase Me with Kanye West and Mr. Rager. He was beginning to establish himself as a major force in music. In February 2009, appearing in Solange's music video Tony, he later performed on the MTVU Spring Break show and NBC Last Call with Carly Davidson. Converse launched a Your It campaign highlighting 23 artists from around the world in web shorts. Cuddy was chosen to represent Cleveland in his segment. Reflecting his rising status as a voice of the youth, in June of 2010, Converse launched a unique collaboration called Three Artists, One Song. 
teaming up Cuddy with Vampire Weekends, Rostam, and Best Coast Bethany's Cosentino to produce the track All Summer. The lead single for the Lonely Stone on second album, Man of the Moon 2, was Erase Me, featuring Ye, of course. The album dropped in November of 2010, debuting at number 3 on the Billboard 200. It sold over 169,000 copies in its first week, crossing 200,000 week 2. Don't get me wrong, Cuddy was also featured on several songs off of Kanye West's Good Friday's weekly tracks in 2010 as well. I don't know if you guys remember Good Friday, Christian Dior, Denim Flow, and The Joy. You know, forging a strong creative partnership. If we stayed specifically inside that year, I think it was pretty big for him. Announcing he would be forming a rock band called Wizard with the Dot Genius. He also planned to release a mixtape called A Man Named Scott prior to that rock album. However, in 2011, he announced that he wasn't going to pursue with his label Dream On. In an interview, Solo Dolo explained they parted on good terms and would likely work together in such the future, including a potential Man of the Moon 3 album. He had wanted to take control of things himself going forward, and I could completely understand that. I mean, it's a lot of things that the man tried to do, but it just didn't really come to fruition. I don't know if you can remember like a music video with a short film starring him in Cage directed by Shia LaBeouf. I would have loved to see how that played out, but most of these projects just didn't pull through. Cuddy returned back to his roots and in September of 2020, he finally announced Man of the Moon 3. The album was met with positive critical reception on its December 2020 release. Two years later, he released Intergalactic, an album coinciding with his adult animated Netflix special of the same name, which tells a love story set inside New York City. I love the concept after watching the film and hearing the songs that go with the scenes. I appreciated how it was well put together and directed. It truly shows how multi talented this guy really is. Both the special and album received widespread critical acclaim. Let me know if you like that anime down to the comment section down below too. Man of the Moon 3, The Chosen, released on December 11, 2020. The concept album followed Cuddy's overcoming his darkness while battling his Mr. Rachel Ulta ego. It received positive reviews from critics and debuted at number 2 on the Billboard 200, making it another top 10 album for him. Breaking into acting, between 2012 and 2014, he landed a diverse mix of acting jobs. He starred in indie films Two Night Stand and Tacoma before voicing a character on The Cleveland Show. His feature film debut arrived via the high octane Need for Speed in 2014, while also acting in the Ever After opposite Teresa Palmer. I don't know if you guys remember that Need for Speed game too, I had that for Xbox 360. I don't know, let me know if y'all played that in the comment section. Guests appeared on shows like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Scorpion, and eventually the big screen adaptation Entourage. Later, more TV roles came through. Though his Empire stint was short-lived, by 2019, he supplemented minor film parts with recurring TV slots. Kid Cudi has frequently partnered with leading apparel and footwear brands across the high-end and streetwear spaces. Back in 2009, Japanese streetwear giant Bay printed Cudi's likeness on t-shirts. A dozen years later, in 2021, both him and Babe collaborated again on an official collection. After years, partnering with existing brands, he set plans in 2021 to launch his own fashion line. He eventually unveiled MOTR, which stands for Members of the Range, and in 2022, described as fusing 90s grunge, hip-hop culture, and futuristic elements, the UFO logo was co-designed by Cuddy and designer Nigo. The first MOTR piece was a basketball-themed tee made for 2022 NBA All-Star Weekend. He announced MOTR would debut at 2023 Paris Fashion Week with an all unisex line including apparel and sneakers produced inside Europe. I mean, this guy did it all. So I don't understand how people overvalue his talents and he had a lot going on inside his career. I mean, where do you stand? Is Cuddy an undisputed icon who moved culture forward or just an overrated disappointment? Has his music uplifted you personally? Or do you feel let down by the quality? Where does Cuddy ultimately rank as a top dog if you gain newfound respect for Cuddy's ever-evolving artistry and a one-of-a-kind journey, please smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to stay updated on the most influential, pushing talents that is changing pop culture. This is North Studios. Till next time, I'm out.